Hey, Jeremy Hammond here, and in this video I want to talk to you about how we got here in terms of the uh, coronavirus, the novel 2019 coronavirus response, and the lockdowns we're seeing uh, in countries around the world. Uh, and I want to take the, 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 I want to look very closely at the Imperial College of London model that was the uh, <clears throat> very influential model that caused the UK government to reverse itself uh, from a policy of um, sensible social distancing you know, measures uh, that would not shut down the economy and would allow for the development of population immunity. And so Imperial College of London put out uh, an estimate saying that, no, 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 if you do that, we're going to have huge surge of hospitalized hospitalizations uh, and and the hospitals won't be able to cope, there won't be enough beds, there won't be enough respirators. Uh, and so we need to lock, we need to lock this down, we need to have extreme social, you know, quote unquote social distancing me measures, meaning stay at home orders essentially, where people don't go out except for, you know, the, the most essential goods, food, and things like this. Um, and so th this is, a, it's, again, it's been a very influential um, piece of work. Uh, the Imperial College, I don't know the extent to which the World Health Organization was involved in, in this modeling, but the Imperial College does have a, a collaborative relationship with the World Health Organization. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind too. And we'll, I'll talk more about the, the WHO's role uh, later in other videos. Uh, but I just want to write, for, for this video, I want to keep it as short as I can, but I just want to look very closely at this Imperial College estimate uh, or model. So the first thing point is that it's a model. Okay, they were just you know in a, it, with any model, it, it's only as good as the assumptions that go into it. Uh, and they made some pretty big assumptions, and uh, I won't talk too much about that. But I just want to show you their own results because there's been aspects of the model that the media have hammered on from the beginning, from you know when this first came out in in the first half of March. I don't remember the exact date. Uh, but they're not showing you the full picture. And so that's what I want to do. I just want to show you um, the full picture and how their conclusion that we need to implement these measures does not follow from their own findings. It does not follow from their own uh, projections and how an alternative conclusion can be arrived at um, <clears throat> from, from their own data. And so the, 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 the graph that you're seeing on the screen here is <clears throat> what they had estimated, you know, in terms of, you know, various scenarios, uh, starting with, you know, doing nothing, what would happen if we just did nothing and, our, and life went on as, as usual with, uh, um, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus circulating, uh, <clears throat> which obviously was unrealistic because, you know, <laughs> nothing was already not happening. I mean, it was, there were already measures. I mean, people, people's behavior was already changing. There were already um, policy measures in place. Um, and so, and then they just looked at, you know, what would happen with, give, with different types of, of measures. So, you know, case isolation is the, the orange line. Uh, the green line there is closing schools and university. Below that, you see the case isolation and household quarantine. And then below that, you have the blue line, which essentially represents, as far as my understanding, basically the, the path that the UK had been on prior to the reversal. So case isolation, home quarantine. And social distancing of people, uh, you, you know, in their, you know, in their 70s or older. So social distancing of the elderly. And as you can see, they have the red line. That's surge critical care bed capacity. And with those measures in place for three months, um, they they had projected a, quite a large surge uh, that would overwhelm hospitals. And so you can see that. So that the the the, the lines, uh, the horizontal lines, represent um, number of beds critical care beds uh, occupied per 100,000 population. So this was what, you know, this was the the nightmare scenario they were talking about where it's just like we, we can't, the hospitals will be overwhelmed and we'll have uh, excess deaths just because people won't be able to get the care that they need. Uh, so moving on in, in, this, in the report, this is another graph that the media have, um, that the media have, have taken this aspect of the of the model and really uh, hammered away at it and this is what they've really focused on 
So you can see again, uh, critical care beds occupied per 100,000 population, and, and they're comparing a do nothing scenario uh, with two different, um, more extreme social uh, social distancing uh, measures. So the orange line uh, still gets above surge critical care capacity. Uh, that's case isolation, um, household quarantine, general social distancing, uh, and then with the the green line there, you can see that they managed to keep it below critical surge capacity um, with more extreme measures, including uh, social uh, school and university closings, and uh, you know essentially stay-at-home orders. And so that's what they're saying. You know, well, comparing these two scenarios. In the one, we're going to have this overwhelm in the hospitals, and in the, in, the, in the other, you know, we can save people, we can save lives by just shutting everything down. Just shut the economy down, essentially, and keep people at home. Don't let them go to work, and, and you know, this will save lives. Um, and so, <laughs> the, the first point I want to make about that is how they were narrowly focused on saving lives from COVID-19 and there's all kinds of assumptions that go into their estimates and what the projections were. Um, and that, that's not what I want to talk about in this specific video. Maybe I'll, I'll just maybe talk about that later. Um, but setting aside their assumptions, even, even just if we accept their assumptions that were input into the model, if we just accept their own assumptions. All right, what I want to show you next is uh, the other half of this graph, you can see here, I'm, I've got it cut off because this is what the media was focusing on. And here's what the media weren't telling you. So here you can see the rest of the graph. And so you can see that after five months of extreme lockdown measures, once those measures are lifted, there's, again, they haven't solved the problem. Okay, this is the point. They haven't solved the problem. They've just delayed it. But look at this. The, if you look at the green line or the orange line, there's still a surge. They don't stop the surge from happening. Only it comes back and it's even worse than it would have been had they just sustained the three month uh, you know, sensible social distancing policies in the first place. So they haven't solved the problem with this extreme five month lockdown. They've just delayed it and made it all that much worse in the long run. Okay, and again, this isn't my analysis. This is their own projection of what would happen. Um, so obviously this is a problem uh, and they acknowledge this problem. <clears throat> so here, here's, what, here's a direct quote from the report. Introducing such interventions too early risks allowing transmission to return once they are lifted. If insufficient herd immunity has developed, it is therefore necessary to balance the timing of introduction with the scale of disruption imposed and the likely period over which the interventions can be maintained. In this scenario, interventions can limit transmission to the extent that little herd immunity is acquired, leading to the possibility that a second wave of infection is seen once interventions are lifted. So I just want to go back and show you these slides again, just so you can see it again. If you look at the blue line again in the first graph, you can see that uh, you know it. it yes, it, it uh, went well above the critical capacity. Uh, but look at the where the line is. It's it's a little below 100 uh, critical care beds occupied per 100,000 population. Compare that again to this graph, where even their best case scenario gets well over 100 critical care beds per 100,000 population. So again, point being according to their own projection, their own analysis, not mine. They only delay, by implementing these strict lockdown measures, they've only delayed the problem and made it all that much worse in the long run. Why? Because they're preventing the development of population immunity. And again, that's straight, you know, that's their own words. Uh, here again, there's another quote from, from, the, from the model, from the report. Once interventions are relaxed, in the example of figure three, from September onwards, infections begin to rise, resulting in a predicted peak epidemic later in the year. The more successful a strategy is at temporary suppression, the larger the later epidemic is predicted to be in the absence of vaccination due to lesser buildup of herd immunity. So again, they're acknowledging that by preventing herd immunity, by preventing population immunity from developing, they're only delaying 
and uh, worsening the problem in the long run. So here is their solution to that. They acknowledge that as a problem. So they figure, well, we can just do this. And what this graph is essentially showing is that they're going to lock down the economy for a while, and then when, when cases are reduced to a certain level, they can open things back up again and let people go back to work and get on with their lives. And then as cases start to rise, because again, they've, they don't have, there's no population immunity developed because of the, the measures that were in place. So cases will inevitably rise again once those restrictions are lifted. And once they rise to a certain point, then they'll lock everything down again, stay home, don't go to work. Cases, case numbers start to fall again, let, you know, open it up, let people go to work. And, and essentially they're treating the economy like a light bulb that you can just switch on and off. You know, turn the economy off, turn, uh, turn the economy on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. This is their, this is their, this is their plan. This is insane. This is insane. Here's some more quotes from the, their, their own report. So the major challenge of suppression is that this type of intensive intervention package or something equivalent, equivalently effective at reducing transmission will need to be maintained until a vaccine becomes available, potentially 18 months or more, given that we predict that transmission will quickly rebound if interventions are relaxed. This is their whole end game. They are placing their faith that a vaccine can be developed that's both safe and effective and that can be uh, rapidly uh, produced and distributed globally. Again, another quote uh, right from, straight from the report, to avoid a rebound in transmission, these policies will need to be maintained until, a large, until large stocks of vaccine are available to immunize the population, which could be 18 months or more. They're calling for you know, a year and a half or more of intense lockdown where people aren't able to work, they're not able to go to their jobs, they're not able to, you know, visit their friends and their family. Uh, just total, you know, total lockdown. Uh, and, and on the basis of what? What is their end game? What is their long term strategy? What is their exit scenario? Faith, pure hope that a safe and effective vaccine can be developed that can be mass produced and distributed globally. And there's no reason whatsoever to believe that any of those three things will be true. That it can be mass produced and distributed globally uh, very rapidly, that it will be as effective as natural immunity, uh, at, uh, you know, that, it, that, will, that the vaccine will confer as, a, as an effective immunity uh, as natural infection confers, or three, that, that the vaccine will be safe. And I'll talk about um, the reasons why uh, there's no reason to believe any of those three things uh, in a future video. So the point for this video is simply that, you know, I just want to show you what the media haven't been showing you. Like from the beginning, when this first model first came out in the UK reversed course, uh, and in the US, you know, we've had uh, states implementing various degrees of lockdown. I'm in Michigan where the governor has ex implemented extreme lockdowns through executive orders. Um, and, uh, this, you know, the state economy is, is obviously suffering, as other places are as well. Uh, and so I just want to show you you know, the, the, the assumptions that these policies are based on. Number one, politicians implementing these policies, they have no exit strategy. Their only exit strategy is faith that a vaccine will be developed that's safe and effective. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'll talk again in, in future video, I'll talk about the reasons why that, that's irrational and why we cannot place faith in, you know, in, in this hope and that we need to be doing things now to be developing population immunity because that is the most sensible uh, course of action that we can be taking right now is identifying you know, we already know quite a lot just from the data that's become in very early on we already knew you know became very clear very quickly that there were certain risk factors um, that most of the deaths that occur are, are associated with certain risk factors and I'll talk about that also in a future video uh, and so just identifying who's at risk and who's not, and we, we know, for example, children are at very, very low risk. Uh, and, you know, the risk of children from this disease uh, is, is very low and, and very negligible. Um, 
uh, young younger adults, uh, adults without uh, comorbidities, you know, adults that don't have you know chronic illnesses, um, are at considerably low risk of of COVID nineteen disease. And so, you know, th these are exactly the groups of people in the population that we want to be out there. We want to be, number one, working and in, in making income and keeping the economy going, and two, uh, developing immunity. And, and because it, it's precisely population immunity and herd immunity that in the long run is gonna save the most lives uh, for the least cost. Uh, and so, I'll be talking more about these points in future videos. I hope you got a lot out of this one and that you can see the problem with these lockdown policies and how they have no exit strategy.